While Galileo's small looking glass could magnify objects by 20 to 30 times, today's astronomers use massive optical telescopes to gather visible light from space, as well as telescopes that can measure radiation across the electromagnetic spectrum, from gamma rays emitted by pulsars to long radio waves from the farthest reaches of space. Today's best telescopes are incredible achievements, and astronomers are constantly improving them. Hello guys and welcome to Tecmo. Today in this video, we will talk about few space telescopes that will blow your mind. Make sure you stay tuned till the end of this video. Number 5, we have the Hubble Space Telescope launched in 1990. The Hubble Space Telescope, also called HST or just Hubble, is a telescope in space that was put into low Earth orbit in 1990 and is still working. It wasn't the first space telescope but it is one of the biggest and most useful. It is known as both an important tool for research and a good way for astronomy to get the word out. The Hubble telescope is one of NASA's great observatories. It is named after the astronomer Edwin Hubble. Hubble's targets are chosen by the Space Telescope Science Institute, STSCI, which also processes the data it collects. The Goddard Space Flight Center, GSFC, is in charge of controlling the spacecraft. Hubble has a 2.4 meter mirror, and its five main instruments look at the electromagnetic spectrum in the ultraviolet, visible, and near infrared ranges. Hubble's orbit keeps it out of Earth's atmosphere, which makes it possible for it to take pictures with much less background light than telescopes on the ground. It has taken some of the most detailed pictures of things that can be seen, giving us a deep look into space. Many of the things Hubble has seen have led to big steps forward in astrophysics, like figuring out how fast the universe is growing. Space telescopes were first thought of in 1923, and in the 1970s, NASA and the European Space Agency worked together to pay for and build the Hubble telescope. It was supposed to be launched in 1983, but technical problems, budget problems, and the Challenger disaster in 1986 slowed down the project. Hubble was finally put into space in 1990, but its main mirror had been ground wrong, which caused a spherical aberration and made the telescope less useful. In 1993, a service mission fixed the optics so that they worked the way they were supposed to. At number 4, we have the Spitzer Space Telescope, launched in 2003. The Space Infrared Telescope Facility, SIRTF, which later became the Spitzer Space Telescope, was an infrared space telescope that was launched in 2003. The last day of operations was January the 30th of 2020, after IRAS in 1983 and ISO from 1995 to 1998, Spitzer was the third space telescope that was used for infrared astronomy. It was the first spacecraft to use an orbit that followed the Earth. The Kepler Planet Finder also used this kind of orbit. Spitzer is the last of NASA's four big space telescopes. But unlike Hubble, which takes most of its pictures in visible light, Spitzer looks at things in infrared light. So not only does the telescope see at a frequency that we can't, but it also does so while following the Earth at about 0.1 AU. So it is not affected by the Earth's atmosphere. The mission was supposed to last for 2.5 years, but before launch, it was thought that it could last for five or slightly more years until the liquid helium supply on board ran out. The date was May 15, 2009. Most of the instruments could no longer be used because the telescope could not reach the very low temperatures it needed to work. But the two shortest wavelength modules of the IRAC camera kept working as well as they did before the helium ran out. They were still used in the Spitzer War mission until early 2020. During the warm mission, the two short wavelength channels of IRAC worked at a temperature of 28.7K. It was expected that, compared to the nominal mission, there would be little to no degradation at this temperature. Both the primary and warm phases of Spitzer's data are stored at the Infrared Science Archive. Spitzer first saw signs of hot Jupiters, which are gas giants that are hot on one side and cold on the other. Number 3. Fermi Gamma Ray Space Telescope, launched in 2008. Fermi is made to study gamma ray radiation, which is the most powerful type of light. Gamma rays are part of the spectrum of electromagnetic radiation, 
just like the light that we can see. But gamma rays have billions of times more energy than light that we can see. Several kinds of strange things shine brightly in gamma rays. Gamma ray bursts have been seen by scientists. They are the most powerful explosions in the universe and may have killed off a lot of species on Earth. Solar flares are eruptions from our sun, and both visible light and gamma rays can be used to see them. Gamma rays can also come from pulsars, which are stars that spin quickly and are very dense. Researchers also want to look at gamma rays to learn more about something called dark matter. Most of the known universe is probably made of dark matter, but regular telescopes can't see it. Right now, the only way we can see it is by how it affects other things, such as how gravity works. Researchers will be able to make better predictions about things like how stars move and what will happen to the universe if they know more about dark matter. In the end, they changed the name of the telescope to honor the 20th century physicist Enrico Fermi. Now, they just call it Fermi. Number 2. Kepler Space Telescope launched in 2009. The Kepler Space Telescope is a retired space telescope that was sent into space by NASA in 2009 to find planets around other stars that are about the same size as Earth. The spacecraft, which was named after the astronomer Johannes Kepler, was sent into a heliocentric orbit that follows the Earth. William J. Baraki was the main person who looked into it. After nine and a half years of use, the telescope's fuel ran out, and on October 30th, 2018, NASA announced that it would no longer be used. Kepler's only scientific tool was a photometer that constantly measured the brightness of about 150,000 main sequence stars in a fixed field of view. This was done so scientists could find Earth-sized exoplanets in or near habitable zones and figure out how many of the billions of stars in the Milky Way have such planets. These measurements were sent to Earth, where they were analyzed to find periodic dimming caused by exoplanets crossing in front of their host stars. It was only possible to find planets whose orbits could be seen edge on. The spacecraft Kepler looked at 530,506 stars and found 2,662 planets. The telescope weighs 1,039 kilograms and has a Schmidt camera with a 0.95 meter front corrector plate feeding a 1.4 meter primary mirror. This was the largest mirror on any telescope outside of Earth orbit. The focal plane of the spacecraft's camera is made up of 42 50.25 millimeters CCDS with a resolution of 22001024 pixels each. This gives the camera a total resolution of 94.6 megapixels making it the largest camera system ever sent into space at the time. The array was kept cool by heat pipes that led to a radiator outside. The diameter of the Kepler's main mirror is 1.4 meters. Corning, a company that makes glass, made the mirror out of ultra-low expansion glass. It was made to weigh only 14% as much as a solid mirror of the same size. Number 1. James Webb Space Telescope Launched in 2021 on Christmas Day 2021, the James Webb Space Telescope was sent into space. Even though the telescope is now up and running, it took a long time to get to this point. The observatory was supposed to be up and running back in 2007. Since then, it has been delayed more than 16 times, and the pandemic has pushed the date way past the last one, which was March 2021. The Ariane 5 rocket carried the telescope into space. This is a special kind of rocket made to send satellites and other things into low Earth orbit or transfer orbit. About half as much mass is in the James Webb Space Telescope as is in the Hubble Space Telescope. The primary mirror of the JWST is made up of 18 hexagonal mirrors with a diameter of 6.5 meters, 21 feet, and a gold coating. The JWST is made to look at the infrared spectrum in particular. It can't see ultraviolet light like Hubble, but it will be able to zoom in on bright things like galaxies that are very far away. The big sun shield on the James Webb telescope makes it much bigger than the Hubble. This is used on all space telescopes, but the James Webb's infrared cameras make it specially important. If it isn't kept cool, it might not be able to see the lights of things it is trying to study. That's all for today. 
thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And until next time.